Hello and welcome back. <clears throat> Giving it another shot now with much cooler temperatures, half because it's dark outside, half because the AC has been running for a while, half because I have actually considered just putting ice uh, or at least iced tea against the, the laptop. Uh, fanless laptops are great, 330 days. Uh, a year. Anyway, uh, let me just check chat, make sure that we are uh, we're online and everything is working out. Looks like stable. Yup. And uh, thermal pressure is good, which uh, the macOS. Uh, integrated CLI tells us with current pressure level nominal, which is just delightfully um, uh, similar to a uh, aerospace uh, pre-flight check. All right, so. If anybody from chat wants to tell me that indeed we are live and that you can actually see things scroll this time and you can see the uh, the code, we are going to get started. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and also, hi. Okay, so what are we going uh, to do today? Uh, it's not an open-ended stream. It's a uh, let's get in, uh, do a thing, uh, let's get dinner uh, kind of stream. So we have this gigantic blob of um, assembly for P256, which I am basically scared shitless of. And looking into other ways to cut it up and I have a nice branch that is moving a bunch of the optimizations from all of this stuff into the um, uh, pure Go implementation. But the, the one I want to focus on today is the um, uh, ORD, uh, P2v6 ORD. Uh, um, I'll, I'll look into uh, I'll explain in a second. So, uh, hello everybody in chat. Um, we sold the heat by more AC, cooler weather, uh, and uh, iced tea against the the laptop. Uh, the um, I think oh also uh, by setting uh, GoMax Prox so that it will not use all of the processors at the same time, which should be good a uh, number of ways. So, um, back to what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> P256 is an elliptic curve. An elliptic curve has uh, to do two things fundamentally. Uh, a bunch of arithmetic modulo the um, uh, curve prime, which in P256 is, well, a large thing that I don't actually um it was short enough uh but i'm not i don't have it memorized um anyway a pleasantly shaped uh prime that lets you do uh, some very cool uh tricks for um, uh for modular uh, arithmetic and you use that to do the actual curve operations so you'll have formulas like this one that given uh, x a y and a z will uh, will do a bunch of uh, arithmetic over that p256 element and get uh, x and y and a z of uh, the addition of two points or the um, double of uh, that point and things like that we are not looking at that today um, i'm also uh, working on that in a in a separate cl but that one I'm just chipping away because the assembly uses um, incomplete formulas and I just, we had 
too many uh, close calls with incomplete formulas uh, causing security issues. So that's just going away. Um, but then uh, you also need to do um, a little bit of arithmetic on the order of the curve. The order of the curve is the number of points that, that are on the curve, which is the actual prime order group that you base your higher order abstraction on top of. So when you do uh, cryptography over an elliptic curve, you stop thinking about the field of the underlying curve, uh, which is what is implemented by fiat here. Um, and you start thinking about numbers modulo um, n, uh, where n is indeed the um, the order of the curve. So, and which here is calling it's calling it a uh, g, uh, because I guess it's the generator field. Um, okay, so. This one, we have a special case just for P256, because if we find where this is used, um, there's an invocation in Cryptoelliptic, which is just um, legacy stuff, we're going to ignore that, and uh, an invocation here in ECDSA. When you are doing ECDSA, at some point you need to do a inverse of a value modulo the um, the prime order of the curve. Inverse is how you do division. Um, in a prime order uh, field, uh, you can always uh, figure out a value that if you multiply it by something, you get um, you get something that if you multiply it by the original value, you get one. That was not a good explanation. Uh, Division is not a thing with integers, but you can also think of division as the value 1 over x is a value that if you multiply by x, you get 1. In a prime order field, you there is such a value 1 over x or x to the minus 1 uh, here, um, and you can calculate it, and the um, easiest way to cal uh, calculate it is to exponentiate that by uh, p minus 2. Uh, modulo p. We're not going to get into that. Let's just accept the fact that a thing we need to do for ECDSA is operating over the uh, field of the um, um, the order of the curve. So not the base field, but but the um, order field. We need to do a exponentiation by p minus two, where p is n in this case. So one way to, uh, to do it, which is the fallback you're seeing here, is by using exp in um, um, <clears throat> in big mod, which is the thing that replaced uh, math big. It's a constant time thing that just takes something into the Montgomery representation, uh, multiplies it four times, then checks the four bits of the exponent, uh, which it calculated into a table, and if and based on that, uh, does a constant time lookup on the table, and multiplies it uh, by uh, multiplies the value by that. It's a um, it's called a double and add uh, chain, and this is the most generic way possible to do it. Uh, this works for any exponent. Um, any modulus, the, the modulus is just a value that we created with uh, new modulus somewhere, new modulus from big. Uh, and it's fine that it's from big because the modulus is um, generally a constant, uh, a, a public value. There's some nuance to that. In RSA, you might not want to let the attacker know which public key you're using. But the size of the public key is always okay, and the functions of MathBig that we use to get just there leak only the bit size of the value, so it's fine. Anyway, lots of context. Now, to get back to us, the important thing is that 
we have ECDSA that sometimes calls this P256 special thing, uh, which is the uh, super optimized code you're looking at here, which does this special stuff and where square and multiply are implemented in assembly, uh, which is in here. Um, and goes and goes and goes and goes and you know you copy the result and there's a last reduction step uh, did we forget a reduction step who knows it's assembly written generations before me um so that doesn't make me particularly uh, confident so your choices right now are only we're gonna do exp uh, the completely generic one, where the modulus is generic and the thing we're exponentiating shading by is generic. Or uh, we're going to do super optimized assembly. I'm not convinced we need to go all the way into optimized assembly. We can try stealing two things from, uh, from this. One is the custom chain that you're looking at here instead of doing a completely generic one. The idea is that there are um, things like there's apparently this one was figured out by Brian Smith, but now there's um, a tool by Mike McLaughlin that you can just give it um, an exponent and it will figure out the least amount of square and multiplies uh, you have to do to then reuse some of them. Because if you take uh, 1111 in binary and you square it, you're going to get 11110. And then if you multiply it by um, 1, you're going to get 11111. And this is what is happening here. Uh, these are the intermediate steps. And then you can start mixing and matching some of them uh, to get... A, and then does a lot more squares and a lot more multiplies. And you use these that you've calculated here as um, uh, building blocks to get your final result. It's actually kind of a fun problem that has papers written about um, search algorithms, which I think might be NP-complete, the, the full search. But there's a bunch of her heuristics. I don't know. Um, if you look up add chain, um, there's a... Um, uh, it has a good a list of um, it has good doc uh, documentation for where the papers um, are coming from. So we can do this optimization, and we can do it do it with uh, big mod. If that's not not enough, we can also hack big mod a bit because I realize that right now um, the public mall. Where is that? The public mall function gets you into Montgomery representation and then out of it every time, which is truly not necessary. Um, but probably because there's no sequence of multiplications um, anywhere. We can also figure out square for add square to big mod. That's another thing we can do. Or we can use fiat to generate a custom. Um, field implementation for numbers modulo n, where n is specifically the p256 uh, one. And the question is, if we benchmark those, are they close enough that we can drop the assembly uh, when we do the ECDSA level uh, benchmarks? So yeah, that's the question. I'm going to check out chat, and if you have any questions before we get started to figure out what we're working on? Now is the time. Ah, uh, yes. Um, asking about my thoughts on why P two fifty six is um is good now and what changed. I haven't written that up um at length yet. Partially because when I do, there will be annoying discussions that will come of that. Anyway, um, the um, 
the very short version is that uh, we now have the complete formulas for P256, uh, which we didn't used to have. Um, P256 has a, a prime order, while 25519 uh, does not. It has a cofactor. And we kind of learned that we need to represent elliptic curve points as bytes and then decode them into a opaque type and then encode them back. And when we decode them, check that they're on the curve and refuse to decode anything that's not on the curve, which might sound obvious, but it used to be that we would do just math to elliptic curves. So points used to be just x, y, big int. And our old APIs are like that. And that makes it extremely dangerous. And... Um, that's a thing that we generally learned not to do, partially thanks to ED25519, uh, which defined everything in terms of bytes, and so we sort of went back and figured out the um, uh, the right bytes encodings for um, for the NIST curves as well. So there is... Uh, oh, and finally, uh, there is uh, Fiat Crypto, which uh, will generate us just nice implementations of the field. Um, uh, for any of the of the curves, and as we're about to see, even of the um, uh, order uh, fields. Okay, let's do it then. Um, we're gonna generate a bunch of txt files. Current pressure level nominal. Um, uh, I think I have a few TXTs in here already that we're just gonna blow away um, because these were the benchmarks for stuff that I've removed. Uh, we're gonna do benchmarks at the start um, just of my um, on this ARM64 and then we're going to double check them uh, against the AMD64. It shouldn't be that differ different because the um, ARM64 assembly is a straight port of the AMD64 assembly. They're very different architectures and God knows uh, the M2s and the Apple M's are weird. So they sometimes can pull off great performance for things that have no right to be fast, but as a start, it's good enough. Um, we are going to um, benchmark the entirety of ECDSA because this code that we've seen here, P256 inverse, is only useful for um, um, in ECDSA. I, we are not exposing it to anyone. Any, no one is using that directly it's so even if we make it twice as low but that makes ecdsa just one percent slower then we're doing it right uh if we kill if it kills a thousand lines of assembly uh good have test um crypto ecdsa run no tests uh that's a regex that will match nothing and bench anything in P256, the chances I get this right on the first try are somewhat small. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> that was right. Okay, so sign, verify, generate key. Um, those look plausible, so we're going to do a count 10 and tee it into a, a base uh, assembly arm64.txt. This is our starting point because we're on a branch where I've changed nothing and it's just synced to master for now. And then we wait. I have a very cute tool called uh, benchdiff, um, which maybe even makes sense to use in this case, but I wanted to get a txt file of reference.
I think this is your opportunity to ask a bunch of questions in chat because we're going to be staring at benchmarks rolling through the screen slowly, <laughs> a few times at least. I promise most of the stream will not be just waiting for benchmarks, but... Eh. Okay, so this is our baseline. Now, the first question is, what happens if we just blow it away? We just go in here and end false. That's all gone. Um, oh, Matt's saying um, uh, learned about you can dash bench slash. So the behavior of that is actually kind of surprising. Um, this gets split into two regexes. And one regex applies to the first part, and the other regex applies to the second part. So, for example, I'm going to do verify or sign, because as far as I know, inverse is not used in generate key. No, it, it can't be used in generate key. Um, and then I'm going to pass this to bench diff. And bench diff is just a short script that I've derived from an existing one. Um, 24, why 24? That did not work. Hold on. Um, which does, um, which runs um, benchmarks uh, at, um, in the current directory, in the previous um, and against the previous commit or a different uh, ref and it has this nice loading bar that it figures out by doing a horrible horrible crime it runs all of the benchmarks with um, one nanosecond each and uses that to count the benchmarks and then it runs them again with the actual timing i am a little too proud of that um, um let's find out Oh, I see. Um, I was using it wrong. I was using my own tool wrong. Nope, still, still no. I need to be in uh, SRC. Well, we're going to find out what, what it's running. Verify. That's great. Interesting. Well, that shows I don't actually know how the thing with the slash works. Well, all right, whatever. We're benchmarking and generate keys, even if it's not necessary. Very confused, but maybe with parents? Yeah, all right, look at that. Um, it has a mode that detects that you're running in the standard library and reveals the standard library um, uh, for the for the baseline, which is useful if you're testing the latest against Go 1.21, right? Because you need to rebuild uh, Go with Go 1.21. But if you're just testing this little one line change here, you don't need to rebuild the Go common. So it does crimes to you. Um. Okay. Ouch. Oof. So that went up. Uh. Uh. 
32 minus 17, 15. And if everything is coherent, the other one should have gone up the same amount because it's calling inverse the same way. And it is, yeah, 69 uh, minus um, 53. Yep. All right, that's, that's a coherent benchmark. And ouch. Okay. Uh, well, we knew it was gonna matter, otherwise we wouldn't have that assembly uh, in general. I'm trying to think, what is the first step? Do we generate the fiat right away and try to re-implement the thing on top of fiat? Or do we... Or what do we do? Um, we could just re-implement this on top of big mod to start. Let's just do it on top of big mod to start, and we'll we'll see where that takes us. So we're gonna need um, a big mod n, which is going to be um, big mod dot new modules from big it returns an error but we're going to give it something that can't be an error in what package are we we're in nisty c nisty c has I wonder where it has N. It probably does not have N anywhere. Yeah. It does not have access to N. All right, so we're gonna have to copy paste it. Um. gonna find it in elliptic slash uh, elliptic probably no in it all we're just looking for need p256 this is the modulus so we're gonna stick this in here is not a production implementation we're just doing this for the benefit of benchmarking um asking you know from um from chat um do we want to see from data which lines are slow or just trust your existing knowledge um it, there aren't really lines to look at, I think. It will be this line, and this line will is already pretty optimized, so there's going to be a bunch of these and a bunch of... Um, actually, just a bunch of these. Um, we, we can look at it. Uh, why not? Um, to do that, we do... Go dev... Um, <coughs> um, test... And I think I had one in the scroll back. There we go. Uh, CPU profile. We remove the tags thing. And we benchmark uh, crypto ECDSA, the one with the biggest effect because it does little else is sign. So we just test sign, or benchmark sign. <clears throat> and we make sure we haven't changed anything yet that would break the benchmark we left the false in yes so we run that that runs for a sec it's important to have run no because otherwise your cpu profile will show all the samples of the test and ask me how i know um and then we run the tool And that came up in a Firefox down here. Let me bring it up. 
Um, yep, most of the time spent in exp. Um, in big mod exp. Um, and a little bit of it in Montgomery reduction and representation, but most of it goes into Montgomery multiplication, which in turn spends most of its time in the tiny assembly core of big mod. So there is very little um, margin for improvement here. Um, um, hmm. Why? Ah, there we go. Yeah, the, that entire function is dark except for that. And um, why is it not? Ah, there we go. And X is spending most of its time here and here and here. Oh, the sign is actually taking a bunch of time. Um, yeah. All right. So the the thing is, we're not going to micro optimize this existing function. We're going to switch the algorithm because we know that there's a better algorithm than just uh, double 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 multiply by window double double double, which is the one in the um. um the one that's being used uh, by the new, by the assembly. So back to our uh, soon to not be assembly file. We have a modulus, uh, just to make sure that we have it right, we're going to just stick a exp in there for now. Um, so here we're going to do k in inv is just a new big mod nat k is supposed to be uh, we can do a set bytes on it so we're gonna call that kk Uh, set bytes requires some modulus because it will check that it's not too high, which by the way is not okay to do here because we're supposed to reduce, as you can see from this call. But we're just benchmarking that these will be tiny performance differences. Uh, Strad, you're joining just as I say. Oh, it's fine. Um, as you see here, we need to reduce uh, below the um, uh, below the order, but it's that's just a detail. We can leave that for later. So welcome. Um, and is here and here, and we're gonna need a n minus two, which is a byte slice. Um, so we're gonna. Um, have a bar n minus two um, bytes slice and a bunk in it. Um, lol, no. I was hoping it uh, co compiler was gonna figure this one out, but it we did not. All right, that's that's more like it, and that's not it. Um, actually, away with this line. Um, now that's right. Okay. So if this is right, um, we can then return rest bytes and. What does it return? Oh, it does not return there. Okay, 
So this should tell us if we're just invoking it right, the endianess is right, and that sort of thing. Yep, test pass. Which, by the way, why are test passing if this is not reducing? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, is this ever attacker controlled? Um, probably not in sign, but in verify, the order is K, which is the third argument to inverse. So here it's S, and S is. Oh no! Actually, that can't happen. Uh, set bytes will check it's reduced because otherwise we'd have malleable signatures. There we go. Okay, so that can't happen. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's still disabled by the end false. Yes, correct. Good catch. We are not actually testing that. I still think it will pass because there's a call upstream of it that makes sure that... All right. Good catch. Let's just make, you know, double sure. You never know. Mm. Good. Okay, so this is working. Um, now we re-implement this stuff with big mod and it's not going to be great because it's going to waste a bunch of time going in and out of montgomery uh, multiplication but essentially we're trying to figure out how far do we need to get with optimizations to get most of the value here um Right, we're gonna need RR. No, we don't actually need RR. Um, that's just getting into Montgomery and that's handled entirely by um, uh, by Big Mod. So essentially we just need to load K into X. Uh huh. Then each of these becomes a new big mod dot net. This goes away. Uh, all the calls to mall become. Well, this one goes away, becomes a set, but ima let's imagine this one. Um, this one becomes, um, res is the first, so that becomes that dot mole. Mole calculates x equal x times y. Oh, I see. Ah, the API is different. Uh, ah, this one does this times this store in here. Well, big mod has multiplied the thing you already have in here. Ah. Um. Okay, tell you what, we're going to make horrible, horrible, horrible helper functions, and then we're going to make them a little faster. Um,
Oh, really? We don't even have set? <sighs> who, who wrote this API? Um... Kind of tempted to jump straight to Fiat. How painful can that be? Last famous words. All right, who wants to see a formally verified uh, field generator work in practice? <laughs> yep. Uh, a lot of congratulations you played yourself going around when I uh, do this. All right. So apparently there's a Docker file. See, past me is not is not entirely uh, a problem. Uh, not entirely un unhelpful. And we're about to seriously test the whole um, thermal throttling thing. <laughs> and Strad is doing some rust trolling from from chat. Um, all right, this will build a Docker file. Uh, sure, this is going to take forever. Yep. All right. Good time to ask questions, folks. Uh, we can start preparing uh, the generator while we're at that. So the generator will probably run this very simple and reasonable <laughs> uh, command which we're going to take out to write manually um, That did not do the right thing. All right, so c dot prefix. What is c dot prefix? Prefix is like p blah blah blah. So we're gonna add a c dot prefix of um, p two fifty six ord. We're gonna kill. Oh, actually, this is just a literal sixty four. And then we need a uh, well these these all go away these all go away this goes away we need to stick the prime in there uh, and this is the prime number the modulus whoop this one was a single argument. And we can check in on our compilation. It's hey, it's compiling. Um, all right. I would believe it if you told me that this run fiat to generate a arithmetic implementation. Yeah, that's plausible. So what else does it do? It generates that. And then we had add chain automatically. Oh, I was very proud of this code. Um, there are 
there's a generator that automatically runs fiat and then automatically runs add chain to generate the invert function, which is the one we're looking at, using add chain, which is the Mike's thing that automatically um, figures out the, the best sequence of additions and um, of multiplications and squarings. We're gonna just use the one in the assembly for the benchmark, but it's likely that for landing in product uh, in on the, in the three, I'm going to yeah look at this. Ah, uh, apparently this library actually gets a little slower than the best known uh, chain. Uh, Dave is telling me that building fiat crypto from a clean directory can take an hour. That would be unfortunate. <laughs> um, I don't think I have a pre-built anywhere. Uh, I wonder if they have... pre-builds upstream that we could copy paste. Uh, All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I like where it is going. Yes. Boom. Well, I mean, not quite what we would want to stick in there, but we'll do, it will do, it will do. Yep. All right. Yeah, the tooling is a little painful. Um, what do they use? I think this is probably fine. Oh, you can put it in there pretty like this. Huh. Yeah, all right. Um, well, we're gonna let that build since apparently we have CPU to spare. Uh, this is what being too bold looks like. All right, so we're gonna add a file here, call it P256 ord yet dot Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Will this work? It did. Yeah, how to generate a do not edit it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Actually, this is meant to be its own package, isn't it? Package P256 scalar. Okay. We made a new package. That's so not how we're going to ship it in production, but whatever. Okay. So, uh, let's figure out the API of this new package. Uh, crypto internal nisty C P256 scalar. Gonna drop all of this big mod stuff and and that did not work. That extremely did not work. Um, 
Bye. Um, <clears throat> let's just. All right, because there are Montgomery domain field elements and no Montgomery domain field elements. Right. So var um, p x. What am I getting wrong? There's a uppercase. Ah, thank you. There we go. Okay. So now we figure out the API once we've anchored the import. Uh, which we could just look at the wrapper here no the wrapper here uh, there should be a set of bytes apparently fiat does not check for non-canonical encodings uh, and it expects the opposite endianness why not so I had to write all that, apparently. Well, we just copy paste this stuff in. But using uh, uh, yeah, I had wrapped a lot of type safety around it that we will have to drop so from bytes takes just four un64 i had made a type for the ones that don't have types um This one also we don't actually do like this. Um, in is k. For the purposes of this, we can just use. Oh yeah, no. Okay, so we copy k in. An element line is thirty-two. Uh, this truly YOLO code. We copy paste invert and then this. Okay, so we have a to Montgomery, which is what we need to do down here. So here and the these are not big mob nuts. They are now p256 scalar Montgomery domain field elements. Cool. Um, here we need to pass from temp into uh, underscore one. And temp is what used to be called X, I think. Yeah. Wow, the old code used just wildly reused X afterwards. Thanks, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. We're going to add that new empty X to make up for that. Okay, so this is the two Montgomery, which was done by multiplying by RR, which is the explicit way to do it, but now we're doing it implicitly. Cool. Now all the moles will become uh, p256 scalar dot 
small, which does takes out arc one, arc two, which is exactly what we want. So we can just replace them as is. That's much easier. Boom. Well, square we have to, I think square probably does not. have the repeated yeah built in repeated thing so the the thing here is a magic let's call it let's make it look oh, at least a little pretty we need to write a short wrapper to do that Uh, close enough. Uh, so the old one did from in to rest. New go feature. But this is not right. Um, uh, I think Fiat lets us reuse source and destination. Yes, it does. But we need to make a temp. So we'll make a temp. Um, and then we do the first one into in, from in to T. No, wait, we can do the first one from in to res without the temporary one. And then we just keep squaring in res n minus one times i think that's right take in we square it we save it into res and then we take res we square it we save it into res and the result is that even if in and res were the same we get the right result i think that's right yeah So mole we now know we can replace with that. And square we can replace with that. And then at the end it takes it out of that domain, which again we go to the wrapper to look at what it does for bytes. And does little to big and all that, which is exactly what we're about to do. So we can delete all those lines. We already have temp. So we take X from Montgomery. I hope it's called the same. Scalar from Montgomery. Look at that. It takes out an arg. Boom. Two bytes. What the hell is two bytes? Uh, what was the function we had called here? Well, we called from bytes, so I guess we're gonna call two bytes, and we're gonna rename in buff, so we can reuse it down there. Oh, 
two bytes and it takes a buffer and our argument and then we invert the endianness of buff and then we return buff wait what are we supposed to return oh and then error all right uh the chances i correctly yolo coded this are i'll be honest here scant um <laughs> And if it works, it should benchmark close to the best we can do. This one is still <laughs> still chugging along. Um, lol. Oh no 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 no. The Twitch inspector is not yelling at me, which is good, but. No. Current pressure level. Heavy. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Let me check. Activity monitor. Make sure that that actually stopped. Because when you control C something, you don't know if it actually stops the container. It did. Okay. So back to us. <laughs> It's never gonna work. Oh, really? Wait, really? Really? Huh? Neat. Sweet. Very sweet. Haha. <laughs> nice. Well, did we make it slower? So I think we removed that. Let's just make sure that that's the only diff we've done. Yeah. And this is close to what we would be doing. I mean, this one is not optimized much, but all right. Time to find out if I get to kill that assembly or if I have to, well, adopt it. No, nope, no cache benchmarks, absolutely not. Uh, I already see it. Uh, it's not 15 anymore, but it's like 2, which is still like 10% of sign. 10% of sign might be too much. Is it? So we're using the custom chain, we're using the, yep, there you go, 10%. 3% of verify is fine. 10% of sign. Uh, if it were below five, I would say fuck it. Um, let's look at whether we can optimize it a bit. Uh, Uh, look at how big a chunk. Oh, it's all in square. It's seriously all in square. Like, wow, mold does not matter. It's entirely a square game. Um, so I guess that that. I wonder if Fiat has 
repeated square. The operations are written at the top. Mole square add sub op from non zero select two bytes from bytes one m sub if step if step pre comp. Nope. Yeah, it's Strad is pointing out that it's probably this. Uh, where is it? This big uh, square, but also each of these are square coefficients, so it kind of makes sense. For every, you know, 10, 6, 4, 2, there is one mole, and this is 64 squares, so yeah. Fair enough. Uh, why is repeated squaring so much faster than just squaring? You don't have to reduce? I bet you have to reduce. Why is fiat so much slower? It's supposed to be kind of competitive. It's like 90% slower because this almost doesn't show up in the benchmark normally, like before we ported it to fiat. Ha <laughs> ha here we go. <laughs> Boom. The field inversion, this is exactly it, except for um, the base field instead of the... Yeah, that uh, that lands nowhere. And oh, hello, Yoni. Um, hmm. <laughs> Why is it always like this? <laughs> Does it look familiar, folks? You know we could do a crime. I'm about to do a crime. Because this is just a benchmarking run. I'm about to do a crime. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, you didn't see it because it's under my face. The, the editor just yelled at me. I'm doing a crime. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> Uh, 
crime, 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 crime. Wait, why is it loading them and loading them again? What? And loading them again? Ah, oh, that's annoying. Uh. This can't be fast. Wait, this is literally wasting time. It's multiplying x1 by itself. By reloading it. x1 never gets modified. I think none of these variables ever get modified, which is actually kind of useful. All right, let's do crimes. Let's take this out for a sec. Let's uh, let's manually optimize this. Maybe even just this will make it faster. Oh, apparently x0 is x4. It's yelling me, uh, yelling at me every time I change a uh, character. It's delightful. I'm actually enjoying it. Okay, let's see if this runs faster. Hello. Just a tad faster, it looks like. All right, barely, but a little. Um, and now let's do the crime. Remember what we said about, oh, they never reuse variables. Well. Um. No, wait, we need to. No, that's fine. We need to do it once with. Uh... That didn't work. It didn't even format. Oh, it does not auto format auto generated files. That's smart, actually. Um, I know better. Do it anyway. It did not do it anyway. Okay, I'm going to manually format my code like a caveman. Um, Okay, so at the end, out one zero is set to this. So now we're gonna do this horrible crime where this will become x4 and this will become x1 and this will become x2 and this will become x3. And we're gonna drop these. I feel so dirty doing this. 
and then this becomes x4 and this becomes x1 and this becomes x2 and this becomes x3 and let's think it through on a single execution a single execution these get set they get used like normal and then they get stored into these which get stored immediately in there so in theory we shouldn't have broken it so much that just sticking one here breaks it uh, <laughs> clipped let's do crimes i love it yeah doing crimes and getting away with it um so now this helper is not necessary anymore we can do that and maybe it will even work wow i i should not get rewarded for my behavior like this truly is it actually necessary to do the seam of when we could use that condition to do a conditional load on the next nope nope i'm i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta stop um and go one eight seven is good ah uh, not that good ah uh, it's better but not better enough i think Uh, okay, that that made it surprisingly faster. Actually, it was wasting all that time just loading and unloading. Wow. Um, Two point seven, I would totally eat it. Uh, eight point eight. Ugh. Are there any other? clear wins in this code should i be hand modifying up uh formally verified code base no no i should not i should not and yet No, this looks huh. I wonder if this is this round trip through different names for you in sixty four is confusing the compiler. Probably not. But might as well take it out and see what happens because there's some special logic there. So, yeah, maybe. Let's try start by taking these into zeros. Uh, because uh, when you take the output of a uh, add 64 and you stick it into the next add 64 it will use um uh add with carry instruction but now i'm worried that it will not do it if you do all these silly useless conversions first uh Right, these are the two digit wide ones. Yeah. 
I could have learned Vim, I could have learned SAD, I could have learned a lot of things. Instead, I learned multiple cursors. All of my refactoring is done in multiple cursors. Okay. Uh, oh, uint1 is defined to uint64. Oh, option right to jump over a word. That I should probably learn. Okay, so do they look reasonable now? Yeah, add capture in the carry. This code could look so much cleaner. It really doesn't need to look this awful. Like, consider where we started from. All right, I'm not going to pretend this is readable, but at least you can sort of make out what the flow is doing. Right. And I think the CMOV can be optimized, but that we'll, we'll check if the bench mark shows any need of it did i save i did save yeah that did not change anything yep now the compiler was smart enough to see through all of that hmm. same Exact same. Well, it was worth a try. But also, I would be much happier having Fiat in my code base if it looked like this. I, I guess I should make a PR. Um, but also, it's OCaml, so. I'm more likely to write um, Go AST um, simplifier. Well, now I want to write a Go AST simplifier. Anyway, unless anybody has brilliant ideas, I think I think we reached the end of our. Uh, oh, let's CPU profile it just to the end of our benchmarking. Killing that assembly costs 8% on um, AMD64, on uh, ARM64. Let's check how much it costs on AMD64 with Rosetta, which is not a good, um, a good measure, but... Well, Square is not as big of a and it's running so hot that it's getting async preempted <laughs> by the scheduler no mm. right i think we've gotten the most squeeze we're gonna get out of this uh let's run it on the md64 I think this will just run it on Rosetta. How nice is it that you can just 
stick gorge in front of it and the whole go stack just goes like yeah yeah sure you want me to cross compile it i'll cross compile it um i even have a script that when you target a uh, different os um or like windows or linux will go like oh you probably wanted to ssh that uh right so let me scp it to another machine and execute the test there and that's not built into bench dev that's just a go exec script um oh why what so why is the amd64 rest so less efficient i might get away with this i might actually get away with this Oh. <laughs> All right, let's try it on something real. Um Does it have AVX something weird? Nope. Um Wait, that's not gonna work. Um, two guesses. There's some of the transition AMD64 that's not in ARM64. Alternative extended max translation does some magic that makes things faster. So no, here's the thing. I don't think that what we're looking at is AMD64 being faster. What I think we're looking at is the rest of sign being slower such that in comparison the 1.5 which by the way do you remember we started at 16 at 15 we got it down to 1.5 microseconds of uh difference that's pretty good it's going up by well it's going up by one you're right it's actually faster well, the delta is smaller. So it sounds like the AMD assembly. Oh, the Go ARM64 compiler is not as smart as the Go AMD64 compiler, which means that the assembly is closer to um, native Go both for our fiat stuff so we, the loss is uh smaller and the the rest is not as much faster like here you have a assembly um hand optimized assembly arm 64 rest of sign scalar multiplication and then sitting next to a go compiled ARM64 um, um, inversion. And the gap between those two things is much bigger than the AMD64 one. This is very good news because it's not my fault. It's the compiler's team fault. And most importantly, as the compiler gets better, that delta will go down. So I could take a 8% slowdown on this platform. People will come for me with pitchforks. Um, but yeah, okay, 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 we're in business. Uh, I don't have a benchmarking machine though. Damn it. Uh, damn it. I think I need to just spin up a EC2 machine. Um, I 
do I even have the credentials to do that on this machine? No, no, I do not. I apparently do not. Um, describe instances, maybe? No, no, I do not. Um, that server is turned off and currently inoperable. The one in the other room is, uh, I guess, better than nothing. We're going to test on a Haswell Think Center, which is definitely not representative, but, uh, yep. Um, well, thank you, uh, Dominic, for volunteering a uh, reasonably idle uh, 3950X. Do you want me to just make up a binary for you? <laughs> You're supposed to say no. Um, so I think uh, I pushed this as a work in progress CL with all my crimes. Um, Lol. Lol. No, wait, I wanted to work in progress that one. Uh, that definitely went. Yep. <laughs> no new changes. That absolutely went through. Oops. I'm gonna go turn that into a work in progress. There we go. All right, and bench line we were using. But also I'm gonna go turn the, um, turn the Windows machine on, back on, back. Oh. I need to cut my hair. Okie doke. Uh, waiting for it to boot. Thank you, Dominic.
Uh, I think I'm, I even have this one running, but this one is a terrible benchmarking machine. So I'm looking forward to your numbers, Dominic. Also, that just didn't work. <laughs> like, outright didn't work at all. <laughs> um, alas? Huh. Well, you get to see my horrible script. What is it doing wrong? What is it doing wrong? I actually don't know. Yep, nope, nope, no idea. Uh, it was working yesterday. If anybody knows Windows, now is the time to tell me what I'm doing wrong. This one is the command with the name and the arguments. And this is copying the thing it's trying to execute to a thing called that. Um, no, it's, it's a relative path. I think it should work. Or again, it was working yesterday. So it's doing the SCP successfully. Wait, why is it called ecdsa.test.exe? It's supposed to be called gotest.random.exe. What, what is it SCPing it as? Well, it's not failing though. Oh, it's failing to copy it because temp does not exist maybe. Um. No, actually, wait. I think this is what it's supposed to be doing, right? And then SSH mega brand this. Ah. Uh. Hello? Do these have to be separated? This expands on the client side. That's what I wanted to do. Where was that? Nope, I don't want to escape a single word. <laughs> OK. 
can expect this this to work actually. Uh, let's stick an X in there. Huh. Quoting across SSH is one of the worst things. Because it does not do what you expected. Um, if you pass separate arguments to SSH, it will not map. I think they can't ever fix it, but it's truly bad. Um... So normally I would stick a bash dash C in front of it, but not gonna work on Windows. Um, I think the TLDR is that we're all counting on you, uh, Dominic. Oh, you you posted them. I I thought I was still waiting. I'm just blind. And, uh, I was there. Mucking with Windows when sweet, okay. Um, okay, yes, 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 okay. I, I'll take the 3.5. Yep, I can gain it back somewhere, uh, or they can dock it from my pay. Um, yes, sweet. Um, and they look reasonable because they go up by 0 0.8 here and by uh, uh, 0 0.9 here which is within the error bar nice okay so i think that answered the question for the stream can we uh can we do this yes now just need to uncrime it uh, by actually making one of these generate a decent file with a wrapper and then use that use that from from here and oof right but this does the crimes uh, huh how do I feel about carrying a manual pet a ma manual patch against fiat better than I feel about the assembly so I think I'm opening uh um issue Stride is asking if the crimes uh actually help in the end and at least on arm sixty four yes by by quite a bit they they're the ones that took us from ten percent to eight percent uh this was pre-crimes, this was post-crimes. Um, you know, that just for... Actually, this was pre-crimes. Uh, then we uh, made it not load every time, and then we made it uh, loop. Um, getting rid of allocs, um, it's not doable with an ECC is entirely um, not allocating. ECDSA could um, could not alloc uh, could avoid a bunch of these allocations, which is probably what I'm going to uh, regain the uh, performance budget on. But I have a giant stack of CLs that will will have to look at it on on balance. So I will do this. I will do. The stack of changes that I'm preparing that move a bunch of very cool strategies from the assembly to the uh, pure go, which by the way will make P384 and P521 so much faster. Then I'll break up the base field assembly into um, into um, just add 
and multiply and square, which is technically what we have for um, P256 ORD, but I want to take P256 ORD from having assembly arithmetic to having no assembly, and P256 base from having assembly point additions. These are entire operations with the formulas just embedded in it, and these are not the same formulas. And I'm going to take that, replace it with the complete formulas, which, by the way, I'm very, very proud of how I avoided a bunch of special casing the infinity by just being a little clever in how select works and how add the fine works and yeah there's a lot of more safety in the um in the new imp implementation and then that will make it slower too and then i'll go back to ecsa and try to make that faster and we'll, we'll see where the ball lands i'll um check it in um probably commit to it for the FIPS module, which anyway has always been slow. So, you know, it goes from slow to slow. Um, and then if too many people complain about performance, then I'll, um, I'll back out what I can't, um, what I can't avoid. Yep. Yeah, um, Sarah is saying uh, he doesn't mind having formally verified crypto in a code base, but I do not want code that I couldn't, in theory, maintain. Uh, because that is why I'm removing the assembly, so why should I move to some other code that I can't maintain, uh, which is this. And yeah, fair. Um, I think this is closer to something I can maintain. Um, I think I can write a preprocessor that does just AST and it's super optimized for var var assign assign which is always safely replaced with that and that makes these assignments disappear um, after checking that uint1 is indeed a uint64 um, and takes away a few parents that are not necessary. And when all that is done, I think I'm comfortable carrying a patch for four lines uh, that makes square um, looping. And yeah, I think I'm comfortable with that. Don't love it, but yeah, exactly. We can actually do a review on the patch that does the um, the for loop, and I'm gonna do this as separate CLs. I'm gonna just generate the fiat, then check in the um, uh, the AST post processor that that does this stuff, and check in the the effect of it, and then check in a patch and make all of those steps of the generate pipeline so that then you can just run go generate and it does every step and it regenerates everything. Um, and we can review the operation step by step. I also think I need a much better seam of, uh, this one is wastes at least a multiplication. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it gets in line. Let's check if it gets in line. Yeah, okay, it gets in line. So probably when it gets called always with the same condition, it will realize that that one times this constant is always the same. Yeah, I think it should. Hopefully. All right. Uh, the mold might get optimized away, maybe not. Um, 
it would have to figure out that this is always zero or one. Not sure. Um, still, if it does it only once, it's probably because it realizes that it gets called always with the same uh, arg1. I think it's going to be fine. Oh yeah, this is the top of the Duin64, so maybe it is being optimized out. It does show up on benchmarks though, which is kind of suspect. It's also probably the fact that this is not great. Like the indirection through the pointer. Although if it's inlined, it's probably fine. Now I'm tempted to make it return a value. Ah, fuck it, let's do it. Um, let's see if it makes any difference. We're gonna put it in here, which we know is hot. Um, so, it's basically doing out equal this stuff. So, this stuff and the mask is arg1 times that. So, back to there. Mask is um, this times that. Then Uh, so out is this equal that, then we take arg uh, two. And arg three and then away with this craft and oops. I think this is what it's doing. It also makes a lot of sense. It's a conditional um, select. I hope that it's smart enough to figure out that not mask here is that. Uh, I mean, do we have it in subtool? Um, well, we have it with int. Hey, crimes for crimes. Let's do crimes. Um, <laughs> X is V is one, and Y is V if V is. So the end case is this one. So do do. do, do. And the and the or case is that we can do away with that, and then all the types are not valid, of course. Um, so we have to do some horrible, horrible crimes. All right. Let's see if it makes a difference. We could see it a little bit in the benchmark. <laughs> crimes, 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 crimes. My guess is 
it's not going to be a large effect, but let's see. Well, that's a noisy benchmark. We're definitely not going to see it amongst that noise. And after this, we're stopping. So if you have questions, now is the time to ask. And, you know, like, subscribe, comment on Garrett. <laughs> um, no, more seriously, if, uh, if you want to subscribe to notifications, as you noticed, I'm kind of irregular in how I do streams. So that's the best way to, to learn about them. You know, that's not nothing. Yeah, CMOV is gone. Oh, wait, CMOV is gone because we're not using it anymore. Uh, Subtle. Subtle was just not sampled. Huh. Well, I guess we're adding this to the rhymes list. Is it even correct? It is. Um. Lol. Really? How 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 is this faster then? Oh, because we're not doing the uh, assignment thing. Um, well, that, that even feels worth reporting to the compiler team. Also, there might be intrinsics happening here. It's entirely possible that this is pattern matched by the compiler. Um, so we can probably do it with a uint64 and, and then it would not be a prime anymore. Uh, well, I mean, this is all right, fine. Uh, I have two minutes to reach two hours, and I think two hours is a good time to stop. So, uh, so inlining was happening, we checked earlier, so it's not the inlining threshold. Um, but I think that the previous function was probably fighting the compiler by doing taking the output as a pointer and then the referencing it into the output instead of just doing equal. Um, so. Um, X is the first one, Y is the second one. We're doing the same thing again. Multiple cursors are magic. Last call for questions. Ah. Yeah, the multiply versus minus one probably. Oh yeah, right. We had the multiply in there. Um, 
Yeah, because the minus one assumes um, it's zero or one, while the multiply, well, also kind of does, but um, surely the compiler is more constrained about that. Well, does not figure out as many constraints. Anyway, I'm getting tired of words are starting to slip, but let's see if it comes out to something. That's very noisy. I don't think we're gonna get a signal out of that. <laughs> nah, that's not right. Oh, nice. From chat showing that the compiler can optimize the, um, the multiply. Uh, into a end big or it's a big okay I don't actually know arm assembly that well which is kind of the point of doing this um, but it optimizes it into an egg which so the multiplication gets optimized Still faster. I'm gonna rerun it, but no, no cache. Bench stat seems to think it's statistically significant. Well, if that buys us back, mm, what a quarter of what we lost, great. Uh, and it will we can apply, uh, up, yeah, apply the same optimization to the um, other fiat implementations, which are not the P fifty six ones, but still. Yeah, that looks reproducible despite the noise. Yup. Lol. Okay then. Hmm. Uh, maybe. All right. So what I'm gonna do with this one is play it with it a, a little bit more. Figure out what is it exactly that makes it better and open an issue with the compiler uh, team if it's something that the compiler should have figured out, which is not obvious, but might be. Um, Maybe it can optimize the minus one to a single op. It's possible, but also it might be that it's just um, optimizing the this whole pattern to a CMOV. Um, yeah, we, we should look at the uh, assembly diff. I think I just ran out of steam. Um, it wouldn't be too hard to do here, but um, yeah, I think uh it's 11 p.m uh this is left as an exercise for the reader you have the cl number in chat and this has been great uh it's actually been a bit of a ride i was thinking uh it was gonna work then i was thinking it was not gonna work and now i think again it is gonna work uh closing up 
I need to get myself a proper benchmarking machine. I'm gonna keep this issue and this issue around. You can go back to sleep. And that's it. If there are no other questions, I think I'm gonna go to sleep. Or have dinner. Actually, I'll have dinner. Yes. Bye, folks.